Hello, welcome Hello. to the next episode you know, of our uh, Over the Limit podcast. Uh, unfortunately, you can see we're back home. We didn't manage to do one no more. We had everything ready. We brought everything. We had people who wanted to be on the show, but... Lawrence was too lazy. Yeah. I mean, was so busy and was so stressful. The little time I had left, I preferred to watch Peaky Blinders. You watch Peaky Blinders? Yeah, yeah. Which, se w which season you are? Uh, just started season five. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Is it good now? I only it's watched okay. season one and two and I didn't like it anymore. I don't have anything else to watch. So. Mm. There's a new Netflix series about the Tour de France. I saw I that. Started watching. I saw. But yeah, so um, here we are. In this episode, we uh, wanted to review the 24 hours of Le Mans, which obviously happened last weekend uh, for the both of us. I mean, no trophies, no Rolexes, but... Uh, no. I ordered one this morning. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> From China or... <laughs> Japan. But uh, we have plenty of uh, stuff to review about it and uh, also looking a bit ahead of, uh, of the next couple of weeks in our, in our life. So... Um, how was uh, Team Turkey in LMP2? <laughs> 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 um, kebab for <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and evening. <laughs> no, actually, actually, it was really good fun. I I was actually um, surprised by how professional and good the team was. Actually, um, I mean, I've never worked with them. I know their name, um, but yeah, I mean, they did a great job. They really took care of the drivers, and they were really professional in, in what they did. Unfortunately, we didn't get the result we, we went for. Um, yeah, just to make it short, um, our M um, had a difficult stint when it was he was on slicks going into the rain, um, also going a bit into the night, and he just, yeah, unfortunately lost a bit of the car and, um, well, touched another car. And this then when started. When was the aqua planning? Or yeah, he, okay. he couldn't really, it was a passenger. He couldn't really do anything about it. It was just... Wrong place, wrong moment. Okay. Um, and then from there on, we started to get issues. Our front right suspension was breaking and it broke twice. Uh, so we f it broke, we fixed it, and two laps after it broke again. Were you driving when it broke? No, I uh, actually... Because I was thinking you probably were going to start to hit the curbs on purpose too. <laughs> no, not yet, <laughs> because we were we were still kind of in it. And if you can, if you see, there are only, I think from the nine Pro-Am cars, only four finished or three. So a lot of cars went out. In general, in the race, a lot of cars mm. didn't finish. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we got out. Uh, they fixed uh, the first time the, the front right, and then I had to jump in. And I did two laps, and then broke again. I went off in uh, turn four. I went just completely straight. I thought, here I go. I just broke again? Or? Yeah, okay. I break for turn four, and then I, I thought I go straight in the wall. <coughs> And yeah, that was it. Then I jumped out, got changed, and went to bed. <laughs> Next morning, I fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But was it, uh, were you guys competitive? Able yeah, to, yeah. to we win? If we, <clears throat> if we didn't, wouldn't have the issue, and we would have had some good calls on strategy in the beginning of the race, because I also felt like we, we let it down there a bit as well, strategy-wise, in the early stages of the race, with all the rain and, and the different uh, situations you could make w from strategy wise um, we would have or we could have uh, had a very good result but our M um, was very good he was 3-4 seconds quicker than any other M yeah. so yeah it's a shame but uh, you know that's racing sometimes it's why did you because <coughs> I, I generally didn't have a chance to speak yet because you were qualified for Hyperpole and then next morning you were not um, yeah, because uh, I had a good point that because actually I'm gonna make a very big point out of that. Uh -oh. um, so my lap got taken away because of a red flag infringement. So I was not within the four or five seconds margin. I was not at eighty. I was at eighty ten seconds after. But as they can see, yeah, I mean, I completely heads up. It was my mistake. I, right. I fully take the, the 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 blame and the guilt for for it because I should have done better. But what the point I want to make is if they can see your data, they can see your how you drive and everything. So we went to go to the stewards and blah, blah. So they show you that your, your graphic when the when red flag break. starts and when it goes down. 
and you could clearly see that uh, it happened exit of Arnage, so the, one of the slowest corners on the track. So I was not really doing a high speed, but I was just rolling. I was not going on. I was not flat. I was not braking. I was just like letting it roll down, which at the end is wrong because I should have braked. Mm. So this I take as a <clears throat> as my my uh, my fault. But the, they take my lap away because of a red flag infringement. But what has the, that infringement to do with the lap time I did after? It doesn't have anything to do. So it's not like I did a track limit where I gained time to do that lap time to then take it away. I would I find that a complete nonsense because you better just give a fine then. Because anyway, they, they care about safety, which I agree, we all have to do, especially in the red flag because it's a big rule, what happened in the past, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then just give a fine. Why do you give your lap away? Because at the end it's a show. Everybody is there for a show. There are like 300 plus thousand spectators. They want to see a nice show. And you take somebody's lap away because he was not at 80 within the so many seconds, which is a rule. But that's probably just, I mean, I agree, but it's probably just a rule in the in the book. Which There's no rule. There's no rule which can say that you can take your lap away. Because often they have rules <coughs> and then they have, they are obliged to take that consequence yeah. as a penalty, so they cannot even choose. But I don't know if this was the case. I don't think, um, unless I, I'm not going to go into the books, uh, I'm not good at that. <laughs> but um, I don't think there is a rule which says if you did not follow the red flag rule, they take your lap away. Plus, the race director said, and I don't know, I think you can ex and agree, uh, when you see a red flag, just don't slam the brakes because of the people behind you. Same with the slow zone. You can He doesn't want you to just slam the brakes because of what can happen behind you. So at the end, at the end it happened, you know, and I, I accept it, but it's just... Uh, I mean, it wouldn't have changed anything in the race anyway, right? No, 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 at the end not. I mean, it was just, it would have been nice to be in hyperpole, mm. but just the way the rule works or whatever they do, I don't think it's a proper rule. So anyway, it is what it is. That was my point. Okay. I'm done. Point taken. Yeah. And your race? How was it? Amazing? Um, difficult to <coughs> to really pinpoint what, you know, my conclusion of it is. I think obviously it was a very, I mean, a very big race, you know, for us. It was the biggest race of the year. Uh, first time in the highest class. Return of Porsche, 75 years, uh, the one at the 20th win. Roger won his first win in Le Mans, so there's, it was a huge effort. And from the whole program, I mean, as you know, this, is, this was the highlight race of the season. So everybody was there, the, the whole board members, everybody from Porsche, all board members from Penske. Uh, it was a very important race. And also for me, I mean, you know, I've, I've been working for this race for, for months, everything I did, training, food, diet, preparing was all in focus of, 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 of Le Mans. Um, cause my, yeah, my big dream to, to win that. And, you know, in the end, I was somehow was, I knew we were not going to be the quickest car out there and drive away from Ferrari or Toyota. I mean, it was quite obvious, but, um, Somehow the feeling that we still had a, a, a very good chance of, of winning it because, you know, there's a lot of stuff which can happen in the morning. There was a lot, a lot of stuff which happened this year, especially. Um, but unfortunately, it also happened to us. Um, and I mean, we were, the car was nice to drive. It was fun. Like when I did my, my first laps in the pretest, I was like, actually, like, fuck, this is... This is cool. I mean, first of all, driving that car in Le Mans was kind of like a bucket list thing ticked. Mm. But then, you know, it's what we do, 345 on the straight. Uh, Porsche Corners is quite, quite cool. Um, and it's just, no, it's, it's just cool. It was, it was fun. The car was better to drive than the last couple of races, so we worked well. Um, and in the end, we were closer to the other ones in pace than than actually expected. Um, I was actually thinking that Ferrari would have been further away, but it was. Uh, Why you pee in your pants? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, last thing I was close, but I kept it in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, then 
qualifying um, was a bit messy. Kevin had some some issues with traffic and then went one lap, but he made a mistake, I think, and then red flags. So we didn't qualify for hyperpole. But I mean, doesn't matter. No, <laughs> disqualifying for twenty four hour races, especially unless you have sixty cars in the class, um, it's more uh, I always call it a, a dick comparison <laughs> 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 between between everybody, but it doesn't really make a lot of difference. Um, and then we we had to start ninth, went into the race. Um, it was obviously I uh, knew the start as well. I think it's the first time ever. Yeah. I mean, it was the third time, I think, but again, the, I mean, the, f the back straight was fully wet. Yeah. I was like, when I came <laughs> the warm-up lap, and I look at first chicane, first braking, first time you come down the race at 340, full slipstream, wet, everybody on slicks. Was yeah, like, it was fun. Well, we all, I think everybody started braking in the middle of the straight in hypercar, and nobody tried to overtake each other. Actually, if everybody was really, like, Everybody smart. was, yeah. But the guys in front of me started to brake, so, okay, I'll brake as well, and I was like, fuck, still, like, ages to go but behind me nobody was trying neither so i was like okay it's fine <laughs> that's the same and um and the start was actually quite fun um we had good pace i i think i, I took the peugeot and i overtook michael on the next lap um then yeah i took like three four cars in the first half an hour um and it was uh, everything was going well um we were staying kind of with the pack, so it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Um, but then the first issue we had was that um, I think uh, in Kevin's first stint, puncture. He had a puncture in the beginning of a lap, so we we dropped the lap back. Um, and it is possible this year in Le Mans to get a lap back with all the safety cars, um, but it's difficult. You need to be. It's not like IMSA. You need to be in the right position. But and then during the after that, I mean, we had to we had to push very hard to in the beginning to stay on the lead lap because we were one lap down, but like ten seconds in front of the leader, going a lap again a lap back. So I did, I think, three stints in the night, like really just pushing flat on, trying to. It was, I mean, it was a Ferrari, <laughs> so it was, uh, it was coming back a bit, and then we eventually we drove away a bit even at night, and we're like. 16 seconds, and then we got a safety car when we get like three quarters of a lap back, and then uh, or more, and then we all started together, and it was a Peugeot leading at that point because the Ferrari went off. Yeah, in the night. Uh, at, at night, that was when we were driving. Then the Peugeot was, <coughs> and they were in front of me. And at the restart, I overtook them both and get the lap back, actually. But then it was, it was kind of dependent on when the safety car would come and when not, if we would be able to catch it back. And that went on the whole night, and we didn't. There was no safety cars, I think. Um, and then eventually, um, yeah, Kevin had uh, the accident. With what happened actually? I don't know. You didn't see it? No. Uh, yeah, he tried to to overtake Kubica actually mm. on going into Porsche. The first one. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, he was a bit late to go there and Kubica s turned in he stayed there and he just turned in but he was technically he was still completely in front so Kevin had to slam the brakes and avoid him and then lost the car and then went into the wall uh, in Porsche and then it was actually not big damage but we came in to, to change bodywork and um, then they found out there was another issue and there was a, a water hose line leaking or something and then we lost 13 laps mm -hmm. on the end. Uh, and then we just <coughs> you know drove to the end um, and we had a small hybrid issue which wasn't really a big deal but at that point they wanted the car to finish so we came in again to fix that to be sure that we drove to the end because it was already one car was out and the other car was in the box again as well so they wanted to have at least for sure a car to finish and then we were just what happened to this well, one car, the NASA car? It just stopped, or the Cameron car? Yeah, the 75, they stopped after four hours. I actually don't know exactly what, but they stopped and couldn't restart. The number five car had uh, a water leakage, I think, and then after another issue. So they were also, yeah, we had some reliability issues. Um, so yeah, we finished. What did we finish? Ninth. Um, 
not, I mean, not where everybody, everybody was quite, I mean, not down, but it was like a reality check. Um, yeah, of course. So you mean you learn a lot there. Huh? I mean, and also at the end, I think everybody saw that. Oh. Uh, still have some work to do. Yeah, and I mean that's. It allows everybody to understand what happened and 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 improve. I mean, we did work because the beginning of the year was difficult, I and mean, we did work a lot the last months and tests, and it's been going a lot forward and a lot better. But obviously, it's still still not enough. Um, so yeah. Bit obviously disappointed about that because I was really hoping on it, but I mean, it's like it is. That's how it goes. It is what it is. I actually just enjoy driving back in a LMP2 car or like a downforce car mm. because, um, I mean, of course, driving a GT car is always fun and it's nice, but it's just not the same, yeah. like, especially when you can drive like nice downforce and without ABS, mm. you really can brake and do it yourself. Me too, coming from the Nürburgring, I've just after the first laps. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I drove GT cars for years and years, like you, and I would say that I liked them and enjoyed them, but somehow this is, I don't know. Just more, f I, I feel it's just m more pure or... No ABS plays a big role as well, I think, in all of it. And it's just a downforce. You have so more, I feel more things where you, if you are good at it, can gain on it, you know? Yeah, I think it's maybe driving style or, or, yeah. or feeling or yeah I feel I felt comfortable I went out in Le Mans yeah, and like too. literally <coughs> in Théâtre Rouge I turned in the first time I was like oh I'm uh, it's already quite quick and I'm like oh feels nice and I was like comfortable on, on lap two I was on, on like spot on braking for the first chicane yeah and then normally in Le Mans you need a bit more time but I just felt really I had the same with, with our car we had a really strong car as well we put the car on the ground on Sunday and um, we had a very good car, um, very good front, mm. which I personally like. And um, the rear could follow all, all the time, but we lacked like six kph in sector two. But sector one mm. and three, we were very good. Yeah. And we tried to make the setup better and better. And actually, we then made it worse in the corners, but better on the straight. Mm -hmm. And uh, Friday, no, Thursday evening, the, the last session, uh, Thursday night practice, we were quickest, I was P1, and it. the car was really nice to drive. Like, I, I know, I was quickest on Wednesday evening, I thought we were really yeah. the same. <laughs> yeah, I remember, yeah. And I was so happy, and then, the, for, I mean, we all have to, we have to drive, you know, I'm not driving by myself. <clears throat> so then, uh, our, uh, Am drove the car, but for him, him, it was a bit too pointy, and he mm. couldn't really... So we had to come back, um, but I'm very happy because we gained our top speed. But yeah, it was just so fun to do that, to do, to do those laps mm. with the car. We're very nice. You just throw it in and it works. And I had the last because we were 13 laps back and I had to do the the end. They wanted to me to me to do a, a tire compare to learn something for next year. So I had to do the last three stints. They wanted me to do a triple. But after two stints, I was like, this, I mean, it's not going to work. The rear tires were already a bit gone. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we'll give you uh, a new set of, uh, of, the, of the normal compounds for one stint. Uh, but we'll do a driver change to Kevin. <laughs> They're like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> 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 I can do another one. I'm still good. I was like, okay, one hour. And then I got the tires. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to, because normally you always do double or triple stints. I was just driving and, and, and pushing and I like pushed two laps in the beginning and took it a bit easy because when the fuel comes down, I mean, you regain you, so you much gain, speed. Yeah. Um, and then I had to come in again for half a stint to take fuel and I like, and it was really fun, the last stint, but I started, I mean, I drove 11 hours in total, so last half an hour was getting a bit sore and I was like, okay. I, I said to Adam, because I know him very well, I said, Adam, I have a sensible idea and he was what, what? You don't understand. I have a sensible idea. And then I told him, I think I have enough, I had enough of fun. I'll, I'll try and bring it home. <laughs> he said like, oh, it's very mature of you. Because <laughs> he knows me. I mean, he doesn't even, uh, he knows what I'm doing while I'm driving, while I'm pushing, but he, he didn't say anything and just let me do have my bit of fun. Um, do you actually like, when you go to the Porsche curse, do you like hold your neck on the right or you just lean it on the thing? 
keep it right. You just lean it on thing. No, no, I keep it. You, you, right. you like force yourself to keep your neck on the right. Yeah, I don't lean it on the headrest. No, I keep it straight. So when you go to a right corner, you keep you ho try to hold your neck to the right. Yeah. Why? No, it's just a it, Was your neck getting tired? Or no, what? I just always just lean. I don't even make the effort to put my head to the <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no, my neck was fine. My lower back was because we had to change the master cylinder on the brakes because we were having too much brake travel. And we had to go to like a very stiff pedal. And like that last half an hour, my low back was really getting, so yeah, I drove 11 hours, so it was quite a bit. But yeah. I had a, a very big shit my pants moment. My Where? Uh, Indianapolis. On the quick right one or? Yeah, while well, braking for the next one. Oh, on the left? Yeah. Fuck. I went, I mean, I was pushing, but I never had a moment in the race the whole time. I mean, yeah, yeah, a bit of oversteer on this but never something which scared me. I go in Indy, you know, you, you, when you say fuel, you coast a bit before and then you drop a gear and go in without braking. And then you brake for the next one, Indy 2, and I went in. I was always going a bit more and more because it's not my favorite corner, probably for that reason. And I brake <laughs> for Indy 2 and all of a sudden, the left rear locked completely. So I had the car that like this, uh, I catched it, but at that point, I mean, I was going full on to the wall because I was, I mean, I completely missed the braking and I was going to hit the wall. I mean, I hit. Oh, you did? Yeah, I went to the wall. I went into the gravel. I tried to keep kerning. I think 10 meters before the wall, I was facing it like at this angle, like 80 degrees. I was like, fuck, if I'm going to hit like that, it's, I'm stuck. I turned the steering wheel fully to the left, full power. <laughs> <laughs> the car turned and I touched the wall completely sideways, took like this, came back and continued. And yeah, no, no damage. Nope. <laughs> yeah, the secret. Well, they changed the bonnet because the bonnet popped out. They changed the bonnet of the car, and that was it. Yeah, you do it probably once. It's gonna do like, it twice. No, the, the rim was a bit damaged. Had some vibration because of the rim, but the next lap I did my best lap of the race. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shit, that was. I had as well in, the, in qualifying. I want to go out and you know when you have those carbon brakes and you have zero temperature in them, you have nothing. And I was behind the Toyota and I was like, he was going out very slowly and I was like, oh, fuck, I have to get by him. And I went, but I braked and I had nothing and I locked up uh, front left, but on a new set, you know, brand new set. And so I had vibrations on the whole street, like on a brand new set, it was the worst. But yeah, I didn't, whatever. How was the mall for the rest? It was... Full, huh? A lot of people. Three very nice to 000 see. 325,000 people. Actually. Very, very nice to see. Um, to be honest, I have to tell you a fun fact. So I had these houses, these cottages where I was sleeping. Yeah, you were behind. We were in the RV, yeah, we but were it was... Quite simple, yeah, we were quite like two minute, five minute walk. And the night before the race, they did these fireworks. Yeah. Very bad idea. They and had fireworks and a concert. I mean, I had the impression the fireworks were coming below my RV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole same. paddock sleeps at the drivers and it was uh, from 11 until midnight, I think. It they had was. fireworks at that place, which it was very... It was very smart. loud. <laughs> and because you sent me the story um, from last year where they, you know, uh, check a lot with the, the, the passes because of some yeah. um, um, things they are scared about. <laughs> and I was sleeping <laughs> and I heard... But just to uh, <laughs> tell the story b before you start. I had to send a, a real professional pass idea picture of Jacqueline her pass because yeah, apparently too. they yeah. do a background check of everyone yeah. for terrorism. Because last year they caught, I mean, they, they found two people which were linked to yeah, terrorism. Exactly. So, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, everybody had to do this to get this to get to be able to get pass. into the yeah. uh, paddock. It's a pit lane. Wait. And me and my girlfriend Victoria, we were sleeping, and I was sharing the house with my teammate Tom Gamble. Mm. And um, I was sleeping and suddenly I hear these like, but in the beginning it was very soft and, and, and not so many, like two or three, like pew, pew, pew. And I was like, and I, I wake her up. I'm like, do you hear that? What is this like? And she was like, no, oh, it's firework, it's firework. And then I hear it from the other side because for, for me, the house was <laughs> pointing this way and the fireworks were coming from our right. But it, it felt like it was coming from the left. 
but the first one was for me indeed coming to, from the right. But then the left, the, the second one was like, like do, 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 and it was coming from the left. I'm like, fuck, Victoria, get up. They're shooting, they're shooting. <laughs> no <laughs> so way. I was running fully naked in the house. I went to Tom's room. <laughs> I opened the door. I'm like, mate, get out, get out. They're shooting. <laughs> so I was, oh, my heart rate was so, I was like 200. It was, I was so scared. I couldn't, I, I could not sleep the whole night anymore. I slept two hours. I swear on my life. I was so tired to start the race. I slept for two hours in the whole night. I was so scared. But were you sleeping and dreaming? Or no, no. I, was, I woke up from the first two. And I was like, oh, what is this? And then I want to go back. And I hear it again. I'm like, and then I remembered because what you told me from the terrorism. I'm like, shit. They are, they are doing it. They are doing it. <laughs> so I was so scared. And then, oh, yeah. Shil and me, we thought the same. She said, "Somebody's shooting. I think somebody's shooting." Yeah. And I opened yeah. the window and the fireworks was just. But I knew there was gonna be fireworks. It was. I was so scared. I knew there was gonna be. I saw it somewhere on the planning. Ah yeah? yeah. I had no clue. And then I went into Tom rooms fully naked, <laughs> and he's like, he was like sleeping next to the window, and he was like, "Oh, oh man, no, it's fireworks!" <laughs> <man."> <laughs> and he was just there fully naked. <laughs> oh, it was so bad. Yeah, that was a fun fact. But I do this every year. I mean, okay, it's a show, but fucking hell, don't do it next to the spot where all the drivers sleep. But yeah. Yeah, no. I guess it's complaining at the high level. Yeah. But there were a lot of people, huh? Crazy. It was actually very nice to see for... It everybody. was it was insane. And the... I mean, not trying to... <laughs> what do you call it? Be dick and neck or arrogant or whatever, but... When we had to go from the pit lane to our hospi, which was, what, 50 meters? If you stopped once, it took you 20 minutes to go to... That was the first days uh, to get to the, the hospitality. Yeah. I think one... <laughs> I think uh, at the end, we, we changed. And I did it a couple of times. I, I walked to the hospi with my cap like, <laughs> <laughs> like that and my normal T-shirt. And, and then I got through without being... Yeah, without it's some, some... Yeah, it was cloudy. But what... Um, was actually the worst for me is the the timetable. I mean, I respect the timetables. You know, you have the parade, you have all the things. But then, I mean, respect the timetable. Don't tell the drivers or people to 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 be there at two o'clock and it only starts at four o'clock. It's been like that all the time. Yeah, I know, but I mean, yeah, yeah, but you're it's right. It's like if you it, it, if you go with somebody for dinner, you don't say come at six and you are there at eight. No, but <coughs> I mean, that's true. But this year, finally, we had by the team, it was organized well that they booked us a restaurant and we were sitting there having lunch and they called us when we were ready to go. Because I know what, I mean, they even told me you were waiting there for two hours or something. Yeah, luckily, even only two hours because our uh, PR or the person who took care of us to bring us there, she, she lost her phone just before we went to leave. So we had to wait 30 minutes to find a phone. Otherwise, we would have waited even longer, but... Yeah. It's just small. I mean, it's complaining again on a low level, but it's just when you make a timetable, then just respect. I mean, it's because a very everybody, everybody who is there respects that timetable. Yeah. So everybody's waiting for two hours. It's a very, I mean, it's a, I think it's the best event of the year. It's just with everything, the way it lives, everybody knows Le Mans. I mean, you're in the city, yeah. you already pass Paris and you see the adverts uh, everywhere. Um, but it's a fucking busy week. It it's is like, very busy. Especially for us, the Friday, which is the day off, was the worst day. We had, we started at 10 in the morning until 8 in the evening, nonstop. Yeah, it's crazy. I had my lunch in my backpack. Uh, you always have your lunch in your my backpack. My oatmeal. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of part of the show, but it's yeah. exhausting. So, uh, Spa, do, do you, can you already announce who you're driving with now? Uh, it's announced. Ah, yeah? Yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah, with Mantai, Kevin Estre, and Julia Andauer. Who are you driving with? Charles and Charles. <coughs> I hope it will be good. I would just like to win once this race. If I don't win it this year, I'd stop. I go play <laughs> ping pong or something. I'll remember you. But yeah, that's next up for me, for you two. I have DTM in Zandvoort. It will be my debut in uh, DTM. Um, I mean, yeah. I look forward to it a bit. I mean, it's not, unfortunately, the DTM as it was back in the day. Um, but yeah, looking forward, I mean, I have to replay Rene, uh, replace Rene, <laughs> replay. Um, so I have, um, yeah, 
in a way, big shoes to fill because he has a good uh, portfolio in his DTM career. Uh, but anyway, it's different now, so it mm. doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm looking forward. I'll be teammates with Sheldon, so we know each other very well. We will have some fun. Um, What's in two weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other than that, I have some test dates planned. Um, and then spa. We're looking forward to that as well. It's what, in three weeks? Yeah. I haven't done... I mean, I only know for spa since two weeks, but I've been so focusing and busy on Le Mans. I didn't even know my calendar after Le Mans until today when I started looking. So now I know it's spa in two weeks. <laughs> it's literally Did, 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 did you see it when you meditated this morning or...? No, I'm having a week off. And oh, you're having a week off of meditation as well? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, this week, I'm not getting up at 7, I'm not meditating, I'm not oh. even looking at food a little bit. Wow. I'm not training. I said I wasn't going to train the whole week, but I'm probably going to go tomorrow. Um, so I'm having a, a week. Do you feel well? Off. Well, I do feel less stressed because, I mean, I was doing a lot for Le Mans and, 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 and preparing it. So now there's some pressure gone and, and living more you enjoy life more yeah like you have more day. like i do yeah. um but yeah then there's still spa is also a big and spa is i think always a physical race so you cannot sit yeah. back too much you cannot no especially with all the rules and and then mm. you're only three drivers i mean you can rest a bit but it's different but i'm looking forward to that because i mean i'm always looking forward to go to spa but then at the end i always come out there with nothing and i feel like a bag of shit and yeah but maybe this year you know together with bmw we went testing at the official test and it felt very good and um yeah you know maybe this year could be the year who knows time will tell i made a special helmet again yeah yeah so uh i mean let's see we'll see i haven't i mean i think we have a good car and a good lineup but uh We'll see where it goes. I think Porsche wasn't too bad, I think, right? No, they were quickest at the end there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This uh, doesn't mean anything about test day. I mean, for sure, it's not bad. But um, So for our podcast, I have an idea. Oh, listen up. Hang on. Jacqueline laughed out loud when I, when I proposed it, but I think it's... Did it hurt? No. It's, I'm, you know, I'm not like you in that way. Okay. It doesn't hurt when I think. Very so nice. we, I mean, every driver we speak to, they want to be on the podcast. Exactly. But problem one, uh, everybody, except the ones we had already, live far away and obviously are busy as us and don't have the time to come over to Hürsus uh, Oldert to record a podcast with us. In the Blumestraat 2. Yeah. Then we had the idea to uh, bring everything to races like Le Mans and do it there, but next issue uh laziness well not laziness i mean we were already so busy and i had well you were busy yeah, oh well 10 millions of uh, pr activities uh that's that was the last thing i could really be bothered on my free day um so tell me as you can see we have that free spot in the middle where normally our guest sits you can also do podcasts um through, I'm looking at it actually, which probably... Oh, I already go know where you're going. Through Zoom or ah, Skype yeah. or whatever, and they are home and they you know, talk with us and, and we record it and can make a video on a podcast about it. But it's kind of funny when we don't, we're not able to you know, speak to the person. So uh, you somehow saw in this, which, <coughs> which series was it? Did you take a mo- wrong two and a half, Two and a half men, no, Big Bang Theory, where you have this yeah. little robot... With the TV ah, screen, yeah, 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 where yeah, yeah. the guy is speaking. So, so I think instead of have put the TV screen there with, for example, Andre Lotre or Rainer Rast, whoever wants to be, Mies, have a TV screen there, which is projecting Zoom or Skype or whatever, and we are talking to our robot friend, and at the same time we record the image and we make uh, a video. And yeah, because how are you gonna make the video? Then you can record it. Yeah. Okay. Ah, you can... So you call on your computer through Zoom. Yeah. You link it to the TV screen, which copy the screen. Yeah. At the same time, you record it. Yeah. And then post podcast. But then when together. we make our video, for example, when I'm talking, the camera goes mm-hmm. to me. But then when he talks, how does that go then? Does that camera just film him? 
Yeah. Or does that then go to the Zoom yeah. thing? Yeah, you can choose either. This we have to, have to try out. Ah. But it works. I still have to find out how, but it works. <laughs> but then we can have literally everybody in the whole wide world. world. That's a very good thing. Wow. Hey. I'm impressed. See, Jacqueline? Yeah, take that. Um, so yeah, I have some free days now. I'll have a look at that. I also have to add one thing. I want to make a sponsor thing. If um, you know, I am very interested in buying a new phone. So um, <laughs> if Samsung wants to sponsor me. Um, you know, you can I follow my number the here. Show, I'll I'm put not it down. Cut out anything this time. No, but it's a general thing. Okay, then Samsung, if you're watching. Yeah, if you know, if you you know want to get in contact, just DM me, and. <laughs> We can have a chat. I can get a coffee. Yeah, the no, that was coffee? it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it's running out of hand. Um. No, but very good idea. Very, very good of you. I mean, I thought it would never work with you, but no, there is li light at the end of the tunnel. That's what we all thought with you, but yeah. And I just booked as well. This is you can join. I booked not well. I planned this morning my holy bike. My holy climbs bike trip. I can't even cycle properly. So how do you want me to join you with your bike no, trip? No, no, it was a joke. You joining me? I want to go alone. Ah. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> no. I can I can also rent these electric bikes. No, fine. Uh, well, last time I went with you, it went really well. Yeah, amazing. You had enough battery in a charger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was the the shifting yeah. thing that broke. So Jacqueline is going on holiday with her parents, and I'm not welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> For 10 days. And I always wanted to do this. So I'm going to rent out a van in Cologne, whatever the company. It's a, a big sprinter in bus. In Germany. It doesn't matter. It's a big sprinter bus with a very small kitchen, uh, a bed, and the storage to put in the bike or whatever. And then we were racing a Monza. Yeah. You have to cut it out. No, I'm not going to cut it out. Brain fart from my wife. <laughs> um, and then a Monza, I'm going to take the van and do like all the big climbs on, on cycling. Like go to Stelvio in Italy. Then I go to Monaco to do, there's a very, there's Col de Turini, Col de Braus, Col de Madon. Then I go to Alpe d'Huez. Then I go to Mont Ventoux. Why you just don't go to the fucking Mount Everest and fucking climb that b mountain? Yeah. Then I go to uh, Girona, always wanted to go there, Andorra, and then I go to Javier, Spain. Oh, why are you going to ask me to join? I'll join. I'll just rent an electric bike. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. At least I, I can cycle a bit. I mean, it's anyway uphill. I mean, I'll for sure be quicker than you. It's electric. Man, come on. Last time I went with you, I, 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 I passed you three times uphill. Yeah, but it's proper. I mean, it's the biggest ride I planned, and this isn't Javier. This is the end. It's a 250 kilometer ride with like almost 5,000 meters of climbing. Yeah, but it's okay. I mean, it's electric. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but just then make it sure that it's unlimited electric, you know, that it's yeah, not yeah, stopping at 25 kilometers because then the rest I have to do myself. And this is. I'll, I'll let you know when I leave. <laughs> Fuck off, can't. <laughs> And then I go, and then it's next, and then I go back to Stuttgart, because I have to be on the sim. And then I want to drive back from Stuttgart to Belgium by bike. Yeah, you can go by yourself. Yeah, I'm going with a friend normally, actually. How yeah. you want to drive? In one go? It's 520 kilometers. In one go? Yeah, just on the gravel bike, and you take the bags up front with a sleeping bag, and the bag in the back with clothes and food. Ah, and so you stop one time? If you're tired, you stop somewhere and have a nap for a couple of hours, and then you continue. Ah, so you continue also well in the night? Yeah. It's cool, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cool. <laughs> no, those are two things I always wanted to do, and I didn't want to do it before the mall, and now it's more like... I mean, after Monza, my next race is in September, so I have time to... Do you have any other stupid ideas? Uh, oh, I've got a good idea. I want to rent a motorhome once and do, like, a trip with Victoria to go... Um, yeah, I don't know where yet. I mean, she has to find out. What's her job? It's the same thing I do, but I just do cycling. 
Because I take the no, it's different. Because I take the van, do a climb, spend the day in Monaco, drive to the next one. So yeah, but with the with the motorhome, itching. With the motorhome, it's different because you, you know, you. Yeah, you also have a bed in the kitchen. Exactly. Yeah, like and you just drive. Van. Yeah, like my van. Yeah, but you don't have to put effort in. You just drive. Yeah, the van drives as well. Yeah, but then you go cycling, so you have to put effort. Okay. It's just different. Okay. Good. Yeah, good enough. So uh, I'll uh, work on our podcast idea for soonish. Yeah. Um, and then we'll see who we get on the show. Um, should be good. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Thank um, you. Speak to you soon. Um, Samson. Cool. So, uh, Samson. Samson. Yeah. <laughs> Cold Reef. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Yeah. Uh, like, comment. You can follow Greece and OnlyFans. And uh, all yeah, right, the dog is coming in the show. On so, that uh, bombshell, <laughs> we are finishing off. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh.